Hey, first grade. I am so glad that you're joining me back from the weekend. Um, before we get started, I know you're probably thinking Miss Hernandez is not in her classroom. And you're absolutely right. I am not in my classroom. Um, so when us teachers record our videos, we always record kind of like a week before you actually get to see them. And so today I am actually recording on that really cold day when school was canceled. Um, and so that is why I'm at home. My video is going to look a little bit different, but I wanted to let you know why I'm not in my classroom. It's because I'm actually recording this a couple of days before you're actually going to see it. Um, so that way you're ready for your lesson. And that is why I'm not in my classroom. Okay. But it's okay. We're still going to rock it and we're still going to learn. Now I'm very excited because today we are starting a new unit. Um, you worked really hard with that money unit and you did so good. I'm so proud of you. Well, today we start unit 10. Y'all, we've done a lot of learning this year. So to reach unit 10, that's amazing. Give yourself a pat on the back. That's awesome. Unit 10 is all about data relationships. And you're probably thinking, well, what is that? Okay. If you remember at the beginning of the year, we learned graphs. Okay. We learned how to, um, we learned how to tell the parts of a graph, how to read a graph, um, and how to analyze and ask questions. But that was at the very beginning of school. So you might have forgotten it. It's okay. But I promise you that knowledge is still in your brain because once we learn something, it stays in our brain forever. Now, today we are going to add on to our knowledge of graphs and we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to review the parts of different graphs. We are going to talk about how to read a graph, um, how to analyze that data, and then how to um, ask and answer questions. And you're even going to get to make your own graphs. Now, this week is kind of a short week um, with our unit because yesterday you had a PA for coins. And then, um, so you only have four days of picture graphs. Um, and so today we're going to go ahead and just jump right into graphing. And I just said it, the first graph that we're going to deal with is picture graphs. I promise you, if you're not, if you don't know what I'm talking about, as soon as you see this video, you're going to say, I know what she's talking about. Okay. So today we're talking about picture graphs. The goal for today is to um, identify the parts of a picture graph and to describe the job that each um, part tells us. Okay. Now there are three parts. Um, we're actually going to watch a video with Annie and Moby and they're going to introduce picture graphs to you. And then we're going to work together to, to um, add on to our knowledge. So give me one second and let me share my screen. Okay. So you should see my video. How many books have you read this month, Moby? I'm making a picture graph that shows how many books people read. Let's see. You read two books. What is a pictograph? A pictograph is a graph that organizes and shows information using pictures. The title tells you what the pictograph is about. This graph shows how many books people read. The labels show the names of people and the number of books each person read. This is the key. No, not that kind of key. The key explains what each picture stands for. According to this key, one star on the graph stands for one book. Count the stars to find out how many books each person read. I read one, two, three books. Becca read one, two, three, four, five books. Becca is a bookworm. Here's a pictograph that shows people's favorite subjects. What subject do people like best? 
Each pencil stands for one vote. Math got the most votes. Eight people said it was their favorite subject. Which subject got three votes? Great, Moby. Social studies got three votes. This pictograph shows people's favorite color. Each paintbrush stands for two votes. How many people like blue? You can skip count the pictures by two to count the votes. Two, four, six, eight. Eight people chose blue as their favorite color. How many people chose green as their favorite color? There's half a paintbrush there. Since a whole paintbrush stands for two votes, half a paintbrush must stand for one vote. So one person chose green as their favorite color. It's lunchtime. How can you make a pictograph? I'm starving. Hmm, should I get an apple or a pear? Which fruit do you like best? Okay, so Annie and Moby introduced us to pictographs and they went over the types of graphs. Um, no, I lied. They went over the parts of the graph. Um, and so we're going to take a dive into that a little bit deeper. And I'm going to explain the parts of the graph to you as well as the descriptions. And then you'll get to practice that on Seesaw. So let me share my screen again. Give me one second. Okay, y'all, so you should see my screen now. Now, because I'm, in, I'm not in my classroom, I don't have all of my tools that I um, would have taught this lesson. So we're gonna have our lesson on the computer screen. Now, I already said we're in unit 10 and unit 10 is all about graphs, okay? And so this unit, we're actually gonna focus on two graphs, but this week we're focusing on one, which is picture graphs. Um, in this unit, you'll learn the parts of a graph how to read different types of graphs, how to analyze that data. And all that means, friends, I know those words are kind of big. All that means is you're gonna look at the graph and explain, what do you know? What do you see, okay? Then we're also gonna spend time asking questions and answering those questions. And then you're gonna to get to create a picture graph on um, Thursday or Friday, Thursday, you're going to get to get, uh, create a picture graph on Thursday using data. So that's going to be super exciting. Okay, so today we're talking about picture graphs. Now here on my screen, you should see a picture graph. Before we begin with talking about the parts of the graph, let's just talk about what do you see? What are some items or some things that you see on my graph? Good, very good. You should see, um, like, let me get my drawing tool. Oh no, okay, drawing tool. Um, I see some soccer balls. Do any of y'all play soccer? So you can make a connection to this graph. Then I have some basketballs. Does anybody play basketball? Awesome, and then there's footballs. Anybody play football? Cool. or like to watch football. I like to watch football. And then baseball. Anybody here play baseball or like to watch baseball? Awesome. So you can make connections to this graph. Now I see all of these balls on the graph. I wonder what my graph would be about. I know that it's not going to be about pizza, right? It's not going to be about pizza. I know it's probably not going to be about candy because there's no candy on the graph. It has to be about sports because everything that I see on this graph is about sports. Now, if you remember from the video with Andy and Moby that we just watched a second ago, they said a picture graph is a graph that uses symbols or pictures to share data, okay? And that's exactly what this graph is doing. This graph has pictures of different kinds of balls that you would find when you play sports. Um, and so this graph is using those pictures to show their data, okay? Um, 
whenever you're looking at graphs and you're trying to say, like you're trying to determine, hmm, I wonder what kind of graph that is. If it has pictures, friend, it's a picture graph, okay? Let me ask you again. If the graph has pictures or symbols, what is it? It's a picture graph, excellent. Okay, so let's talk about the parts of a graph. The first part that we have is the title. Just like any book, um, if you were to pick up a book and it had no title, would you know what you're reading? Absolutely not. So just like with books, a graph needs a title, just so that way you know what you're working with. Now, the job of the title is to tell us what the graph is about, okay? So we already said, just by looking at the symbols, we knew that our graph was going to be about sports because we saw balls that are associated with sports. Well, the title of this graph is called Favorite Sports. So were we correct? Yes, we were correct. Okay, now the title again tells us what the graph is all about. What does the title do? It tells us what the graph is about. Very good. Now, if I were to see pictures of maybe, um, I don't know, zoo animals, what do you think that title would be for that graph? Good. Maybe like, favorite zoo animals or zoo animals um, or animals at the zoo. Maybe they kind of surveyed the zoo to see what kind of animals they have and how many of each. So your title and your symbols and whatever you're dealing with with your picture graph have to match, okay? You're not gonna have pictures of sports balls and then your title is gonna say fun at the zoo. That doesn't match, they have to match, okay? Now the next part, uh oh, let me get this off. The next part of a graph is called the labels, okay? Now the labels are gonna be these words on the left side of my graph, okay? That's where you see soccer written out and basketball, football, baseball. Those are your labels. What are those? Your labels. Now a label, shows us what categories were used when they completed this graph, okay? So when the person who did this graph, who took the, the data for this graph, they went around and they asked friends, hey, what's your favorite sport? And they were, there were only four options. You could choose from soccer, basketball, football, or baseball. Let me ask you a question. If someone asked me to put my input for this graph, and they said, hey, Ms. Hernandez, what's your favorite sport? And I said, um, hockey. Would that be included on the graph? No. Um, the hockey is not a part of the graph. It's not included in the graph. So that would not be a valid answer. Whenever you're taking your data or surveying for your data for the graph, you have to include your labels because that's what people are going to choose from. Okay, so for instance, if you wanted pizza toppings and you said, um, what's your favorite pizza topping? You can pick from pepperoni, cheese, pineapples, or mushrooms. Could someone say, well, I like hamburger meat on my pizza? No, because that's not included on your labels. So your labels, again, tell you what categories were used for that data, okay? And then there's one more part and that's the key, okay? Now, you're probably thinking a key that you stick in a door, right? Well, no, not exactly. This word down here, this is our key. Now that tells us what each picture represents, okay? So for this graph, it says a ball equals one. So when I'm reading my graph and I'm trying to figure out how many people voted for a certain sport, I know that every ball I'm gonna count by one. Okay, so for example, let's look at soccer. How many people do you think voted for soccer? Well, let's see, let's count. And the key said each ball represents one. So now I know that I'm going to skip count by one. So watch this. One, two, three. Okay, so three people voted for soccer. Now it's your turn. How many people on our graph um, voted for football. If you said two, you are absolutely correct. Watch this. One, two. 
excellent job. Now, the key is going to be very important because sometimes those pictures are not going to equal one. Sometimes they might equal two. And so you, if it were to equal two, then you would count by twos. Sometimes they can even equal 10. And then you would just skip count by tens. So when you're going to analyze your graph and you're going to count how many people voted for something, you need to make sure you look at your key because your key actually explains what each picture represents, okay? So your key is going to give you that answer so you know how to count your data, okay? So there were three parts to our graph. We had the title. What does the title tell us? Do you remember? The title tells us what the graph is about. Then we had your labels. Do you remember what those were? Very good. The labels show us what categories were used in the graph. And then you have your key. And that tells you what each picture represents. Very good. Or the amount that each picture represents. Okay. So we just went over the parts of a graph, and we also learned the descriptions of each part. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go on to Seesaw, and you're going to create, um, complete your activity. Um, I have a pre-made graph for you, a picture graph for you. You're going to drag and drop the parts of the graph, and then you're going to record your voice to explain each part. Now, you're probably thinking, why did Ms. Hernandez have us record our voice? Well, because I want to hear it in your own words. I want you to explain to me what those parts are. I don't want you to type it and I don't want you to write it. I want you to say it so that way I know what's going on in your brain. Okay, so work hard. I look forward to seeing all of your hard work and I will see you tomorrow. Bye first grade.